Um, yeah, we got. Okay, so we've got a couple of visitors. Welcome, Dave, and welcome, Brandon. Um, we had a, a few signups, a bunch of signups, so people sometimes will pop in, uh, or people will catch it on the recording too. Um, oh yeah, for sure. So uh, now that we're recording, welcome everyone. I'm Andy Harwood. I'm the co-owner of the Vaz Harwood team here at Keller Williams Premier Realty out of Woodbury. I'm here with um, our, our director of operations, Nora Harry. Um, so we're kind of running the show today, uh, but the star of the show here is Mr. Andrew down here. Um, in, you wanna say hi? Hey, Andrew <laughs> from Minnesota. Um, I'm at Realty Group in Maple Grove. Yeah, Long and Mike. Yeah. Love those And guys. me and Andy, we used to be in the same office in Keller William um, Uptown a few years yeah. back. Long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's how we know each other. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to invite you on today because, uh, and thanks so much for making the time to do this. Um, uh, because I have learned so much from you, Sherilyn, and I have learned so much from you already on uh, real estate investing. And I don't even know that I want to do necessarily the same thing that you do because it's, it's, it looks like so much work to me. And it, and I know it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, um, sweat equity. Um, right. but could you kind of talk us through maybe like how you got started in real estate investing and then in kind of what you do? in terms of yeah. the Burr method and all that stuff? Yeah. So I got into investing because there was like a point where I kind of like hit rock bottom and I was kind yeah. of like thinking like, how do I build a bulletproof life? And I just kind of like restructure my mindset of like kind of focus instead of like earned income, I start focusing on like passive income. Yeah. And I just kind of try to figure out what ways I can have passive income. And then when I start finding these houses, you know, I, I, I try to live by this quote, like, um, how do I, how do I live for free? Like, how do I get things for free? So I just started like kind of practicing that mind thought process. Like how do I get homes for free? How do I get cars for free? How do I live for free? How do I get food for free? So a lot of it was just like, how do I coordinate, start thinking like, how do I get this to pay for that? And this, so like when, when I got into like house rehabbing, I do the, the you know, where you had to put like 25% down. Mm -hmm. I just try to make 25% profit. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. It's a little choppy. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to make like 25 to 30% profit so that I'll, like I'll make my own down payment. So then I usually do a cash out refi and I can get out my cash. Like, um, barely like no cash, personal cash in it. Like for, I usually get back after six months. So. I'm going to want, we're going to want to break that whole thing down. Cause what you just said in about a sentence or two is like a whole. Yeah. 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 So Burr. Start burr me at the beginning. Is, um, pretend I'm, pretend I'm, I know nothing. Yeah. So the Burr is, uh, it stands for buy. You rehab, rehab is fixing it up like a fixer. Mm -hmm. And then you, um, uh, Burr rehab refinance and, uh, refinance and repeat. Yeah. So you so you buy the house, you rehab and fix it up, and then you uh, refinance it. After six months, you can refinance, get your cash back. You rent out the property, and then you repeat the process. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, so these properties that you find, how do you go about finding a property? I know it's not easy. It's like a needle in a haystack. Yeah, I know it's kind of tough. Um. So what I do is I create a list. So I try to find a, like a zip code that you want to, that you want to invest in. So I'm always focusing on like cities that has like high appreciation, high rent. So, uh, you know, like I'm always trying to, mm -hmm, and really kind of know where that city is planning for the five, next five, 10 years. So like, I noticed like houses that has a lot of population, um, not a lot of housing in that neighborhood, a lot of job opportunities. Cause I feel like when there's more jobs, you know, a lot, you know, the houses, they, kind of hold a little bit stronger so i'm always looking like you know i'm buying a st louis park because you know i i do you know if i buy a house for 300 i want it to double to the 600 in 10 years so that's where i'm kind of finding like a zip code and then i have a a, a software called prop stream prop stream and um deal machine and i always try to 
buy houses like older. So there's a there's a filter list that I put. So houses before 1990, and I also did people has owned the house longer than 15 years, and then I always try to look for um yeah. So like find um the the equity um people that has a lot of equity in their house. I notice the houses that do um like the sellers that don't really care much about the property. It's like those um. Homes are in, in, inherited or people that are, uh, are like, it's passed away. Because, like, they have, like, no money tied to a number when you negotiate with them. So, you know, like, and it's like, you know, if you buy the house, like, there's a number that you just won't never let, like, let down, like, a certain number. Yeah. But, you know, when, when there's kids that people that get passed on the homes to them, they have less, um, uh, less attachment to it. And to those that might get rid of it, they sell as a fixer. They, you get those best deals out of those type of sellers. Yeah, so you're looking for real fixer uppers and people who have a lot of equity or or, or it's paid off. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Right. You just said it in interest. Sometimes you have to drive for a dollar. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just said an interesting thing too. You you're looking for properties that are going to probably double in value in in ten years. That's a that's your rule of thumb. Correct. Okay. Okay. So you need very yeah. Specific- I I, I would like to like right now because you know I like the appreciation because like the appreciation is very important because like the cash flow is great, but the appreciation can grow so much. You know, like in your neighborhood, Andy, like. You know, the appreciation you want the good neighborhood that has like high appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's 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 be clear about something. So this is not flipping, right? No. Because you're not selling the house. You're you're renting it out. To refinance and to keep it as long term. Because yeah. when you have these properties, it's like your way to retire. You know, you want the passive income. Yeah. Yeah. And then Crossstream and Deal Machine, or do those help you find, does those help you identify the properties or those um, help you plug the numbers in? The props, prop stream, it helps me um, create my list. Okay. So you create, okay. so you create, you create your list. So you, it filter out your list faster. How do you go about approaching a seller? Is this a door knocking activity or a postcard activity or a, um, so you... I do normally sending postcards. Okay. Um, I, I do phone calls sometimes, but I do mainly postcards and door knocking. Okay. And so this is really with the really... times like, mm-hmm. so this is really boots on the yeah, ground. It's pretty intense in terms of um yeah to get yeah typically that's how you kind of get the best deals if you can work directly with the seller do you think any ever do you think an opportunity like this would ever be on mls or is that probably no no way i think um it is it's very rare but it's 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 tough because i feel like the mls they're kind of picking up now but sometimes you can get really lucky if you can run the numbers right yeah so like so like for us i when i go into the seller i have like these like i have like four ways how i know if it's a good buy or not so i look at the percentage of the numbers so i look at the arv the purchase price and the rehab cost so those three things is going to determine if this is going to be a good buy for me or not so i gotta know the purchase price then i need to know the arv and then i need to do the rehab cost and depending on the profit margins, I'll decide what I'm going to do. So it's between the 20 to 30,000, 20 to 30% profit margin. I'm buying it for myself to keep. If it's like 15 to 20% profit margin, I'm wholesaling to an investor. And I usually put my fee in there. If it's anything under 10%, I'll put it on, my, on the market. So I kind of have to find what the seller needs and what they want for the property. And then as soon as I kind of learn, and I know what to do with it. Okay. And for anyone who doesn't know, um, ARV is after rehab value. 
Yeah. Yeah. So in other yeah, words- because you know, in a lot of times, like, well, I don't know. Yeah, like how much does it cost after it's fixed up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So after, <clears throat> okay, so you 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 find the property, and when you find a property like this, and I've I've been in, you invited us over to at least one of your your houses, and I think yeah. you were, I think you were tearing it to the studs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think. Um, uh like the amount of work that goes into it is is amazing to me like you were literally yeah. tearing out the bathroom the kitchen old wallpaper it was everything that was just getting knocked down with a sledgehammer yeah and the craziest thing is i don't know i don't do any of the work you don't do i yeah, just you, hire yeah i hire somebody to do it so like you know i think my mentor asked me these four questions it kind of made me kind of like trying to figure out like the idea how many houses i need so you ask like, what age would you like to retire? Yep. And then two, um, how much cash flow do you need to retire? So if everything was paid off, let's say like you want $10,000 a month in positive cash flow, then you quit your job and you quit. And then what's that average four bedroom, two bathroom rent in Minnesota? You know, I'll say 2,500. Yeah. So yeah. To, to get the $10,000 cash flow, you get four houses and then you pay it off. If you can pay it off in 10 to 15 years, then you get to retire. So, I mean, just like how simple that sound, I was just like, wow. Yeah. You know, like, instead of us working so hard every day and not having our money do anything, I just think about, like, you know, if I just get four houses and focus on paying it off, yeah. I get to have that $10,000 yeah. per month cash flow. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, uh, so, you you don't do the work, you you hire it out. Do you know, Correct. Do you know some people who do the work? Um, themselves or yeah. is it just not worth it to yeah. you? How, what do you um, think? So, it, so when I look at it, right, so I feel like if you're going to be living into the house, you can probably afford like a cheaper handyman. But like for me, I hire a cold crew. They could be a little bit more expensive, but they can get it done in 60 days. I have some of my friends that are investors. They're like, you know what, Andrew, your, inv- your contract just cost too much. But they, they did it themselves and it took them a year to finish. And, it, yeah. you know, when you think about all the mortgages, the payments and all that stuff, it almost added the same, but I got it done in 60 days versus he took a year. So like yeah. it kind of thinking about like, kind of like how fast you want to get that work done and how fast you want to get it rented out right away. And you have to be very careful on the contractors and you never want to pay anybody hundred percent upfront or 50%. I do 25% draws. I hear a ton of people get burnt because of the contractor. And a lot of time I interview my contractors, I'm like, hey, you know, a lot of contractors like to brag about their work. So I'll be like, hey, um, hey, are you working any projects that I could look at right now? They're like, hey, yeah, I'm looking at, um, I'm remodeling a kitchen at 123 Main Street. Can I come check it out? And they're like, hey, so when you think you'll be done with this kitchen, you say two weeks, you come back in two weeks. If they're not done, that means you know that they're not respecting that seller's time. So it is really important for you to like, shadow like what people do for realtors um interview with people yeah 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 so at this point you've got you've got a list of contractors that you know and trust correct yeah yeah and it took some time to find those people yeah um you know referrals i think referrals has always been like a great resource I think people have referrals. I think it's kind of like real thing. When you have good referrals, is is always always really trustworthy. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think taking the time to learn about the contractor, how they do business, um, how they respect the seller's time, um, you know, and all that stuff. But I always like to watch their projects because you kind of want to know what kind of finishes they're doing. What type of work they're doing? Are they sloppy? Are they taking shortcuts? So you kind of want, you know, when you talk to them, you just don't know until you see it in person. Yeah. 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 That makes so much sense. Yeah. 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 And so you'll, I'm sure you'll have some efficiency built in then once you've done one project and you've got. Some, yeah. yeah. And um, another thing to kind of keep in mind too, there's a difference between rental material versus personal. Yeah, I went over on one of my projects by fifty thousand. 
just because I was emotionally attached to the house. And then I was doing finishes that was not necessary, like marble floors and all that stuff. Because as a rental, you just need a, you know, just do some regular planks and yeah. waterproofing. You don't need to go all crazy. And I think you just have to really um, listen to numbers very, very carefully in, yeah. during investing. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you found the house, you've done the renovations. Um, tell me about the refinancing. How does how does the cash out refi work? So the cash out refi, so they'll appraise your home. So they'll they'll appraise to see what your home is worth after it's fixed up. And they'll get they'll loan up to 75% of it if it's gonna be a rental. Mm-hmm. So you're so you're all in number. So if you did the birth strategy, you should be all in right at 70%. So if, if the bank sees it, you know, if you're at a million dollars for easy numbers, if you buy that, if it appraised for a million dollars, the bank will loan you up to 750. Gotcha. So yeah. they give you a new loan at 750, but you bought smart. Let's say you bought the house for 500, you put 250 grand in at 750, you should be able to get all your cash back. Yeah. You know, for so, easy numbers. So you're, you're not, you're not using up cash to do this. You're just tying it up temporarily. And that makes some, that makes so much more sense to me why you'd want it done in sixty days rather than if it's a year or two to finish the house, your cash is tied up and you can't do another one. Maybe. Yeah, and and a lot of these houses have like you know you have so much equity in it, you have a you can take out a HELOC line of equity. So let's say that twenty five percent, that two hundred fifty grand, you can take a loan against that to buy your you know another property. You can use that for rehab and stuff like that. So you can use. Um, you know, when I bought my second, my very first invest, the second property, I took a HELOC out of my current mortgage, like 60 grand to do the 20% down on my fixer. And you know, the coolest thing about that, when I was thinking about it, is that's not income. So yeah, you're not paying tax income tax on it. Yeah. And then the cash out, the refinance is also tax free. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you get a tax benefit. You get tax write off the rehab. You can do those tax write off. You get um, the. No, we're not. We're not disclaimer. We're not tax professional. Oh, yeah, accountant. No, no. Don't don't yeah. anybody listen to this. <laughs> yeah. Andy and Andy and Andy told me, and you know, no, I'm screwed. Yeah. Um, but yeah. the there's no tax on the money that you're taking out if you use a HELOC. There's no tax on the cash out refi. It's not income. You yeah. get to deduct uh, what? The interest. In- interest. Yeah. I mean, the. Um, uh, I think you can. I think you can um, depreciate the the property too. I mean, the tax yep. it's just add up and add up and add up and add up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's there's a lot of benefit for having a lot of prop like houses, and you can count out the depreciation. Yeah. Um. The furniture, because I do Airbnb, I can write off um, taxes on the furniture, the property yeah. manager, the cleaners, the uh, lawn care, um, if, all that. And if, you, and if you do have income from another yeah. employment or real estate sales or whatever, this will offset your taxable income too. Right. It'll help lower right. your net tax rate down. Right. I think people yeah. who don't understand investing sometimes wonder, how does how do people pay so little in taxes and right. it's just because you can get a lot of deductions when you're when you right. have this this type of a business yeah you know investing is only scary at the beginning but when you create systems in place yeah. it's like one of the best things ever because like you know when you look at one house and what one house can do for you is so like it's amazing so let's say you even make 500 bucks per month in cash flow that's six thousand dollars a year, and yeah. I feel like you know that when you have a system in there, like when you look at when you live in your own house, how much issues have you had in the last twelve months? Mm-hmm. A lot of time, people are like it's not terrible, but I was like, if you think about that as rentals, not a lot of people call me at two a.m. or anything like that, you know. Um, but I have home warranties for everything, so if something breaks down, I just file a claim. Yeah, and then they call, they go over there and they either they replace it or fix it. And I don't really have to leave my house to go over there and take a look. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if you have the right system, um, think of like the goal of like what it could do for you, you know, if you're really, you know, 
want to live for free, I think it kind of is a little bit more motivating to invest. Oh, totally, totally. Um, but you you hit something that was a question I wanted to ask too. So for somebody wanting thinking about maybe getting into this and maybe is scared about scared of it, um, were you scared in the beginning? You, you or how did you kind of like get your feet on the ground and realize this is going to be good or Knowing you, you probably just barrel right into it. But yeah. I got a lot of people like, oh my gosh, I don't know. There's so many ways I can get my butt kicked, you know? Um, yeah. But <laughs> I think if one thing was just like kind of have um have like uh you know exit plan, but also look at the people that are living really well and kind of like looking at their lifestyle. And mm -hmm. I just feel like you know, success leave clues and seem like all the successful people are able to live a better life because of investing. I never hear anybody like, oh my God, I'm so grateful I put so much money in my 401k or I'm living, you know, blah, blah, blah. Everybody always says like, you know, the real estate investment always been the best thing. So like there's so much data and like people out there that I personally know that was had a lot of successful story that made me feel more confident, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but like, there's a time in your life where you're like, you're tired of suffering at your job. And like, sometimes you just need hope and like, well, how could I live more freely? And you're like, well, the rental thing, it seems kind of scary, but that's the chance that I'm willing to do to better my life or give me freedom or give me financial freedom or like the yeah. things that I can, the time I can give to myself. Because like the cash flow that I get now is just like, it's, it's amazing. You know, if you get six, you know, what could $500 per month can do for you? If you have four houses, yeah. that's a thousand bucks, you know, and when it's all right. paid off, that's a, that's $10,000. Yeah. And taking that little it's, effort to kind of learning it could give you freedom. It's like, it's, it's a good chance to take. Yeah. And, and it's not you paying it off. It's the tenants who are paying it off. Yeah. And let's say that all of a sudden it went bad, but if you buy it smart, you have a ton of equity in there. You can sell and make money. If the market yeah. shift 5%, but I'm buying at 20, 30% equity. So the market tanked 10%, I'm still ahead. And I can still yes. sell it and all that stuff or whatever. Have you had um, have you had to sell one yet, or decided to sell? Um, one? I'm selling my townhouse because the appreciation tapped out. Okay. So I'm gonna switch over to single family homes. Yeah. Um. Yep. So I have a two bedroom, one bath. Um. I'm. I feel like it's kind of tapped out. So I'm gonna come. I'm gonna take that cash and park it into like a four bedroom, two bath house because it will go further ten years from in now. Our, in a, um. Are you doing that as a 1031 exchange? Uh, it's my personal home, so I'm be able to get tax free. Yep. Oh, so sure. I'm looking okay. at my personal home. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 1031 exchange will be smart if I get to that point. But um, no, I'm just trying to collect little single family homes now. Yeah. If anyone doesn't know, too, a 1031 exchange is when you have one investment property and you can kind of, kind of swap it for another one in a tax sense within a window of time um and then you don't have to pay capital gains on it yeah so like if you were had an investment property and you sold it um you probably have to pay like 30 percent. so like yeah. if you made 100 grand profit you have to pay 30 grand so the 1031 you can keep 100 grand tax-free if you keep it in real estate and you have to identify your property within i think it was like 120 days something like that yeah so if yeah. you have a property that's not what you want it to be maybe it's not the right equation for you or something is there's there's ways to there's lots of ways to get creative right right mm -hmm. do you have yeah. a do you have a good tax person who helps you a good tax company or yeah preparer? is that yeah. and on that actually on that question is there a what what like other people do you need that you have that help you taxes and financial planning or what what yeah what's your circle of folks you know, what I learned in life is when you learn how to raise your standard, your life becomes easier. So like when I was looking at my tax account, I wasn't having a high standard of a tax account. So I, a tax account, I have to ask them, what's your net worth clientele that you have? And do you have like um, investment property? Do you do Airbnbs? And there was a lot of questions I didn't ask when I first did my taxes. But after I laid down the road, I started working with a tax account that invest themselves. And they knew a lot more things for me than my past tax account did. Um, yeah. 
I would agree. You know, and I, I just learned to um ask better questions when I interview people that I feel like I'm building my own football team. You know, you want to pick the best players because the best player will make you win in life. I'll, so, I'll, you know, my. I'll, I'll tell you my little rule of rule of thumb on that is the best people, the best um, consultants in your world and people that you surround yourself with, they'll they'll contact you. They'll actually drive you crazy. In a way, mm -hmm. like our tax, mm -hmm. my tax guy, he's on my back about things. And I, I think I went through four people who just kind of waited for me to pick up the phone. And then, yeah, the and kind of building. Yeah. And then there's Nora, who's always holding me accountable. And yeah, you know, like, oh, you know, <laughs> she's after me I, again, you know, so it's like in a good way. Right. I mean, you want people who are going to like, um, yeah, uh, not just take not just take instructions from you, right? Yeah, it's almost like um set up your foundation where you can't fail. Yeah, you know, pick the right people that can always going to make you win. And it's hard for you to fail, and it's like you know, create a system throughout all your issues in your life. Yeah, uh, create a system. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, just thinking if I had any other other questions on my list, we kind of talked about it. Yeah, let me ask you. Yeah, I think um I think the thing about buying houses is really trying to talk to the seller and find their needs and also being really creative with the financing. Um yeah. there's times where I can't get home, so I get a contract for deed. There's um hard okay. money lending. Yeah, there's so hard money lending. Yeah, there's hard money lending. There's five year arm interest only loans out there. There's new construction loans. Mm -hmm. There's like so many loans out there that a lot of people just don't know about for you know, to get into rehab, there's portfolio loans where you can put, you know, all the houses. So all that stuff is out there for us too. Yeah. Like there's loans out there where they'll give you the rehab money too. So the money, the, somebody's got the money and this is the way I'm looking at it. The money's out there. You're yeah. The deal. If like, if you find mm -hmm. the deal, somebody's got the money, right? Right. And the thing is the deal the deal will always bring the lenders because if you have a good deal, every bank wants to give you money, mm -hmm. you know, even though like something you don't, you know, they, they want to give you, they want to fund, but when the deal is slim, it's hard for them to give it to you. Gotcha. Okay. Andrew, we have a few uh, questions from Brandon. Um, what lender do you use if you don't mind sharing? So we'll start with that one. Then there's a second one. Um, the lenders, it depends on what type of uh, property that, like, cause if the bank, if this house has like, um, is a fixer, but I know it will pass conventional, I'll use a regular conventional way. Cause you always get the better rate and all that stuff. But if the house can't pass and I need like 80 grand of rehab and I can't use, I'll use a hard money lender and there's tons out there. Hard money lender is like a 12 month loan. Um, certain lending is somebody I use in Seattle, uh, certain lending, um, there's a few in Minnesota. Um, there's a guy named Hadley um, from Renville. I can send it to you, Andy. Um, you can send it to him. So they charge you like a six month or 12 month loan. So mm -hmm. let's say that you bought a house. Um, let's say you buy the house for, you know, 300 grand yeah. and you need 80 grand of rehab, but you don't have 80 grand, but they're going to make you required to do 20% of the three. Let's say like you buy a house for 300, the rehab cost is 50. So you need 350 grand. Yeah. But you know, if the ARV is over 500, the hard money lender will give you a loan for that 350 with a $50,000 rehab, but they need the 20% down off of the 350. Okay. So that's part of your down payment and rehab. So they'll give you, you have to put the down payment down and they'll give you the $50,000 rehab and you pay a monthly payment. Um, you pay monthly payments until the loan, until you cash out refi. When the house is price high, you get a conventional, I will convert it back to a conventional loan with the today's interest rate and then rent it out. Gotcha. Okay. But it, it's really important for you to know those um construction, um your contractor can get it done in time because if your contractor can't get it done in time, you those fees will ruin you. Like I see a lot of people went bankrupt from it. So I can see why it'd be kind of scary. But just yeah. pick safe safe rehabbers. Just do like the simple ones. Like I like those three bedroom, one bath 
Ramblers with an unfinished basement where you can just finish and finish up the basement, paint and carpet. And I think that's like a good starter we have before you get like anything crazy. Yeah. But if you have a good contractor, you're pretty safe. Yeah. Okay. Again, referral. Second... Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Or... The second question is, how do you find renters? Are you using a property management company? Um, property, luckily for my renters is people that I knew, but I, I convert everything to Airbnb. Airbnb just gives me all the guests. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I missed that part of it really. I didn't realize you did that. So for the Airbnbs, do you... I have a, yeah, I have a property plan manager that I pay about 15% on my gross income. Okay. And they, and they go over and they clean it and... Yep. They coordinate, um... Yep, they uh they have a calendar with my cleaners and then they communicate with each other and then they um they communicate with the guests when the guests need anything and all that stuff. Yeah. Um they take care of everything. Sometimes I forget that I have it. Like I have three Airbnbs and two long term rentals. And I'm so hands off where I kind of forget that I have these things. Like I yeah because it sometimes it takes me like five minutes, ten minutes a month sometimes. Um but if you create a system, there's another good book called A Hands-Off Investor. Okay. Um, it's talking about how to be systemized. And I, you know, you work with your handyman and create system. And then it's, yep. it's not as you're finding, bad. You're finding that uh, Airbnb um, is doing better for you than long-term rental? In the summer, it does really well. I'm actually thinking about switching to uh, midterm so it can be more consistent in the winter. I noticed that Airbnb do well when there's a lot of events, you know, Minnesota, when they have like artists come to Minnesota, um, okay. you know, they have all these things for us, but in the winter, it's pretty dry, but I seen Airbnb that has like snowmobiles and people up North and I heard those do pretty well. Like my friend Duluth and Airbnb up there does pretty well. Have you, um, you had any problems with, um, or worries about, uh, rental restrictions, your municipal ordinances, um, you know, People have been coming after Airbnb a bit. Yeah, they they are, and I, I think that's why you always run numbers of long term rental. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so I would never. I yeah. run uh, everything I run when I buy. I'm not running off of Airbnb. I'm running it off of long term. Gotcha. Okay. So you can always just decide Airbnb. I don't want to do it. We'll just run it out. It makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say Air Airbnb is more like a business. And then long term is more like a peace free, like put it in there and forget about it. Okay. Airbnb, uh, I'll say like there's a lot more random stuff sometimes when things break down. And, yeah. You know, but my property manager handled it pretty well. And then it's up to me if I want to go there and fix it because I'm cheap sometimes, but or have the handyman go pay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. This was, this was amazing. Do we have any more questions or anything else? Anything else that you wanted to talk about, Andrew? Mm, not really. I think I think investing like now that in my life, I feel like investing is always gonna be like trying to think about if you had ten thousand dollars, just gotta focus where can my ten thousand dollars go as far as possible. Because you know, if you put ten thousand dollars in let's say Hinkley, Minnesota, where would that ten thousand get in? dollars mm -hmm. home in st louis park that ten thousand, that house will appreciate so far so much no further kidding. so it's just like really think about like i'm always thinking about the return and just trying to like you know we all work so hard for our money just you know if we can park it somewhere where it can you know help us in life a lot better and faster and yeah. easier and i'm i'm using most of my cash will pay for my parents mortgage and it feels great you know doing things like that but i would never able to be able to take care of my parents mortgage unless it was for the rental investing yeah that's really cool that shows you what you can do for not just yourself but for other people for your family um, yeah because you know or... yeah because you know my parents came over here as immigrants they didn't have no retirement and then like when i asked my mom what she going to do retirement her face turned red. She's like well i started life insurance five years ago and she had nothing saved up for herself. And right now, my rental property, the first five grand is to retire my mom and dad. So 2500 is going to go to my mom. 25 is going to go to my dad. 
And then after that, I'm gonna start my cash flow over for myself. But just because the rent, the the risk I'm taking with the rentals is giving my parents the the um the passive income and when time comes, you know, they're not relying on social security, they're not relying on the 401k. If yeah. they, my parents don't got none. But you know, just the you know, the things that, you know, just think the bigger picture and sometimes the risk and the headache is all worth it because if you think about the bigger picture, it's like, yeah, my parents are gonna be good because you know the risk I took. Yeah, the wire wire here broke that's only 1700 but you have a home warranty so you just got to create a system where you know it's it's easy easier to win and working with the right people that's what long so always, long always drilled it in drills it into me systems run businesses people run systems yeah yeah that is very inspiring and i wanted to just um maybe i, I want to wrap it up just by touching on the first thing that you, and if anyone has any more questions too, but the first thing that you said really stuck in my mind as we were starting, this is all about mindset. Mm -hmm. Just starting with your mindset, because you were thinking about how can I have enough passive income to retire and what do I need to do to do that? And so it was just all about like, um, it started just with that idea and motivation. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, like you know, sometimes we suffer so much through our life growing up, and it's just like we don't ever want to feel that suffering. And it's like when you think about, like, man, this can actually give me that, you know, you know, I don't want to go back to the, you know, being poor or like the freedom. Like, I, I want, I hate if I can't support my family or they want to go out and eat and I can't pay for the dinner and stuff like that. Terrible feeling. It, yeah. yeah, and you taste that feeling, like you know, like, I'm gonna work hard for it. And it's, it's definitely worth the risk. And I'm very happy that I did it. Um, but another thing, you know, when you think about every 30 years, no house has really went under below what they bought it for. No. It's proven. So everything is guaranteed 30 years. Like even houses that people bought in 1990, trash, but they still get, uh, sold it for more. Mm -hmm. And it crashed in 2008, 2009. So when you think about real estate investing, like you can't lose. And then people's going to pay for it anyways. And then you buy it right. It's it's really hard to lose and if some some if you need it grab a heloc it will help you for a little bit if you run out of the heloc then just sell it you should have equity if you buy it and you hang on yeah i think that's what they say um don't wait to buy it buy and then wait yeah <laughs> yes yes mm -hmm. absolutely yeah oh my god well this oh. is wonderful Do, uh does anyone else have anything you want to ask or brandon or dave Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. This is, this is great. Cool. Yeah, thanks. It's, it's cool to be able to give some value to. Thanks for listening to me too. <laughs> great. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, 